Hey gardeners, so we are back for garden tour number three. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Lindsay. I am the creator of the Mindful Living Movement. I teach urban organic gardening and I'm here to take you on a little bit of my adventures into gardening and share with you what my space is looking like right now. Now, it's only been just over a week since I did my last garden tour, but this whole place has just completely transformed itself. You will see a completely different garden. Um, in fact, I've got about 90% of my garden planted right now. Everything is in bloom. Like, look at these lilacs. Oh, I'm so excited. I wish that they would stay for longer, but hey, gotta be happy with them while they're here. We got some new guests who've moved into our yard, so I'll show you those guys. I'll show you my tomato string line. My low tunnels are gone. I've got my row cover fabric up. My trellising is all set up and ready to go. My irrigation I finally finished, <laughs> so I'll show you what that looks like. And let's get started. We'll take you over to my big main bed and share with you kind of the flow of where everything is at for the moment. So quick overview here, big main section. You'll notice there was a big low tunnel here. That is completely gone now. I've got some row cover fabric and sort of a shade cloth situation. I'll share with you what's going on there. Now this first section here, I've been really humming and hawing about. I've only actually planted spinach, lettuce and turnip and you can see I've mounded all over here but I actually haven't planted anything I haven't quite decided it was going to be carrots but then I had to step back and just take a moment so along the back here is these are acorn squash with some nasturtium and some zinnias that I've sprinkled in these guys are going to be climbing all the way up this way so that's the path that I've given them I've got my peas here. So these guys are all, they've been up for, oh my gosh, just over a month. These ones I just seeded on the weekend and they haven't actually sprouted yet. In the back corner here is some borage and a little, I think it's a pink petunia, it hasn't actually flowered yet. Along the back there is another acorn squash. I've got petunia. I've got some nasturtium. This nasturtium is a climbing one which gets huge and gorgeous. I'm pretty excited about that. This little section here, this was underneath my low tunnel so some of the carrots have sprouted and then over here I reseeded carrots. They hadn't really done very well and they were all full of chick weed so I just made the executive decision to wipe it all out and start fresh because it's often easier to do that sometimes than picking out all the little evil chickweeds. Now this funky situation, this is all of my spinach. Now <laughs> spinach doesn't really like heat and we're about to get a ton of it so I sort of thought I would test out a little shade cover type situation here and it doesn't look like it's actually going to be working quite as well as I think it will. We are in the middle of the afternoon and the way that the sun is coming from the west, the shade is kind of spreading its way all the way over into my other row. So we'll have to see. It's an experiment. I didn't want to go in and buy actual shade cloth until I sort of felt it out. But these tubing that I was using for my one low tunnel and some of the row cover fabric that I already had in theory should actually work but I'd probably have to position it a little differently. So some of them are getting shade, some of them are not but I just want to get those guys as big as they can before they go to seed on me. Here is a row of alyssum and then also oh my gosh I think it's mustard in the other two rows. I didn't actually label the sticks that's helpful big empty section in the middle here probably going to be swiss shard still not entirely sure but i do have some shards starting over here so that's the first batch so those guys are fairly big and then there's some in there that are just like super super tiny and then there's a few here you can see those little guys poking up through the dirt those are the next round of them i've got a chamomile hanging out right in the front there So this is my little brassica patch here. 
These are broccoli, these are cauliflower, we've got some bok choy that are coming out, and then these are all kale through the back here. And they are going to get harvested right now before I go and put my row cover on. They were under the low tunnel up until now, and I have just taken that off today. <laughs> So this is my low tunnel tubing, the plastic poly tubing with row cover fabric this time. And this fabric is what's going to keep the, the, well, somewhat flea beetles, but mostly the cabbage moths. You can see I've got it clipped on. Now I had to have two pieces and there's a seam along the middle. So I always kind of have to make sure I overlap it really well just to keep everything out. This little hole on the side here, I'm probably going to stick a piece of tape over even though I'm sure they'll find their way in no matter what. This guy, this is a clematis that is not in a very good place. He grows, but he doesn't flower very well because it doesn't ever get enough sun. This little sort of middle awkward section here, when the trees fill in, this is really quite shady. So right now it happens to have sun in it, but most of the time it's only like a part shade. So I've got a bunch of rows of lettuce, and then I've also got some more mustard and a plant called orac, which is like a, it's like a leafy green, a red one. Along the back here, these are pole beans, some sort of green bean, I can't remember the exact variety. I've got a marigold and I've got also a climbing nasturtium. And this big tall cattle panel here that I flipped on its side, that is what those guys are going to climb up and they'll probably fill that completely. Now this, that is an elm tree that I do not want there but I haven't actually done anything about it, I just keep trimming it back. Elm trees are evil and voracious, if you are familiar. Big empty section for the moment. Probably going to be kale and bok choy, still humming and hawing about it. These guys you will have seen from previous weeks, but they're getting pretty big. These are the onions that I started from seed. There is radish and carrots happening in the middle here as well as lots of weeds. Time for me to get in there and do a bunch of weeding. We've got onions. My first batch of beets, which I'm pretty excited about. Everybody looks happy and I don't see any damage from birds thus far. Last year, right about this time, the birds were pecking on them. So fingers crossed they stay away from those. Then I've got a second planting here and they're pretty tiny, but this is another round of beets. These ones I started in soil blocks and I actually didn't quite have them under my grow lights correctly. So they're a little bit on the leggy side, but I think they'll turn out just fine. Over here on the other side of more onions is more beets. I'm going big with the beets this year. I want to be able to freeze, can and dry. So we'll see, see if I get to that before I eat them all. This section, each of these dudes here are zucchini plants. I've got a zinnia, I've got a nasturtium, a volunteer onion. I think there's another one somewhere around here. I had onions here last year and some, some of them have volunteered themselves. Another big tall candy cane zinnia in the back that I'm, I'm hoping it's tall enough to poke up through these zucchinis once they get going. I think it will. I think it's got enough of a head start. So that's that section. 
Also, can we take a moment to just appreciate how stinking gorgeous all of these lilacs are? They just started opening the last couple days. Oh, I wish there was smell-o-vision because it is awesome. So this next little section here, I'm pretty excited about. This is all of my uh, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. I've got some onions. I'll take you through and show you all the details. But the thing that I'm really excited about, my husband's a very creative person when it comes to construction type things. So I usually just go, hey babe, I kind of need a thing that does this and I'll maybe show him some pictures. And then he just whips it up for me. So it's fabulous. So this up here, this is going to be the string line for my tomatoes. So we were kind of pondering on how to make this work, but we decided to hijack the fence that's already there for structure. So basically I'm just gonna drop strings down from all of these guys so that all of my indeterminate tomatoes have some sort of support to climb because I'm pretty sure that all 19 of my tomato plants are indeterminate, <laughs> which I didn't purposely do, but that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Some things germinate some things don't um and yeah i i like indeterminates you get a little more harvest from them and some of them have those really sweet varieties like there's one sun gold one which i'm really excited about if you've ever grown it before it's those little tiny orange ones that taste like almost like sour patch kids so had to get quite a few of those guys in there let me show you in detail what is happening in this bed okay so lots of peppers, whole bunch of peppers hanging out in the front here. So tomato, or actually sorry, tomatillos is what those guys are there. I've got three tomatillos in the back there. And then I tried to kind of zigzag the tomatoes across the back because they're all gonna get really big. So that's sort of what's happening there all the way across the back. And right now they're sort of catching some of that half, uh, half day sun, but once they get big enough, I think they'll they'll be fine, they'll be out of the way of the fence. And then in front, for the most part, I've basically put peppers. So there's a whole bunch of peppers that are sort of the next row from sort of companion planting standpoint. I always like to go tomatoes, peppers. And then you can see I've got some basil plants here, so a whole bunch of basil. I had a very hard time germinating basil this year for some reason. So these are ones I started way late, sprinkled in here. These are ones I did actually buy. That's why they're beautiful. <laughs> I've got a marigold hiding out right there in between. That's a two pepper plants there. And then I had a bunch of peppers. These were a yellow pepper bell pepper that were just crazy slow germinating. So who knows if they're actually going to produce, but I stuck them in the front here for fun. And then a lot of volunteer calendula tons of calendula now i moved a whole bunch of them to the front yard and so it kind of probably looks a lot like weeds in between things but i'm letting all of these calendula volunteer themselves and the nice thing is is if i end up finding that something's just a little too squishy i can just yank them because i have an abundance of them so that's kind of fun and this is my little eggplant section pretty excited about those guys they're looking really good this except for this one not sure what happened with that one it's almost stunted these candy cane zinnias like look at how fun those are and they're a tall variety so that should be nice those should stick up through kind of the peppers and everything that's happening this is my mom's little garden patch so she picked out what she was going to put in here we've got peppers we've got some more tomatoes hanging out in the back she's got some sage um, green onions We've got lots of marigolds and some English thyme, which is kind of fun. I've never grown an English thyme before, but that was when she found it a greenhouse and thought it looked kind of cool. So that is the tomato and pepper patch. I've never grown this to many tomatoes before, and I'm hoping it meets the needs for all the tomatoes that we use throughout the year. We shall see. Here is strawberries strawberries and more strawberries and they have started flowering which is amazing i do have them on an irrigation system connected to everything else so they get watered really really well and then i'm growing something i've never grown before and that is amaranth which i'm growing a 
red variety. Those guys are kind of sprinkled around. They are supposed to get quite big, so I'm hoping they're going to kind of fill in some of this empty space. I did put some bare root strawberries underneath here as well, but those are going to take a little while to actually do much of anything. More strawberries, strawberries. This beautiful little shrub of chives that is going to be getting made into chai flower vinegar pretty quick. These guys are going to be opening right away, so I'm definitely going to get a batch of that happening. Now if you've never made chai flower vinegar before, I can send you my recipe, just drop a comment and I'll send you, you know, the recipe for it. It's pretty easy, it does take a little bit of time, you do have to be patient, but holy moly, if you like vinaigrettes on like salad type dressings, that chai flower vinegar is with olive oil, some salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic, is the best thing ever. So I can send that to you if you are interested in it. <laughs> also another moment, look at those eyes. They're my favorite. I wish they stayed for so much longer than they do. So gorgeous. So this little section here, these are cucumbers that I had a bunch of extras, so I sprinkled them here. I might let them crawl across the ground. I might trellis them. I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll see how they do. Generally speaking, when they're on the ground, sometimes they have more mildew problems, but I've got them set up on drip irrigation tubing, so that hopefully will help reduce that from happening. And then I've sprinkled in some nasturtium, some fasolia, which is a little sad. He's not quite loving the heat that we got quite quickly. In the back here, my hostas are really starting to show themselves, which is pretty exciting. So there's a couple of those guys, you can see them sticking up the back. And then there's a bunch of coleus that I have transplanted into there. And they're also a little wilty. They're still having a bit of shock. They're coming around though, doing fairly well now. There's another hosta in the middle here. Those are goji berries, which they're gonna be a while before they produce, probably maybe a year, maybe more. Now this little section, I had a bunch of succulents in the house. These, if you've ever grown these Mexican hat succulents and all of these little babies, I just always pluck the flowers off and I stick them in a new pot and anyways, ended up with a ton of them and I figured, what the heck, might as well stick them outside in with my chicks and hens. Might be kind of fun to see how they do out here. Some seed, some sedums, um, yeah see them I think that were in the house I've got those guys that I moved out here and this is another one that is in full bloom love this one because it flowers early early which helps out the bees quite a bit this little section behind me here I'm doing the same thing pretty close to what I did last year I had a big wall of mammoth sunflowers along the back so I've got some there as well they're a little bit behind I decided to reserve my big big ones for a different spot which I'll show you and these little dudes are peonies which finally have flower buds on them I'm pretty sure this is either year four or five I was actually about to move them if they didn't do anything this year but I guess they just took a really long time I haven't really avidly watered this particular area up until last year when I had the sunflowers because sunflowers require a lot of water so I'm thinking that might have spurred it they just needed a bunch more moisture this corner here gets loads of Sun and it is very dry because there's sand underneath so I'll show you close up of those so this is all sunflowers and I've just I've got them sort of following the drip tubing so that they really are able to access the moisture especially while they're young when they get bigger it's not a big deal but can help them out a lot at the start and these are the peonies look at that finally there's a bunch of them on there which is pretty exciting and this one is also it's also got a few buds not quite quite as many the one thing I did notice is these grasses in the front here. I've got two Carl Foresters and then some sort of red fire grass. And these guys get like really tall, almost as tall as me, and they do throw a fair bit of shade. But 
Oh well, that's how it goes. These are along here, these two guys, these are scarlet runner beans, which I've done them on this before. They've trellised them up this before and it was beautiful having those kind of little pops of red flowers in between the grasses and the sunflowers. So I'm pretty excited about this new section. This right here, this new bed is brand new. My husband helped me put this in just a few weeks ago. And I've decided that this is going to be a wall of corn and sunflowers. So we'll see, fingers crossed, see how it goes. I've done corn and sunflowers in the front here with a fair bit of success. Underneath all of sort of this rocks and mulch situation is basically just straight sand, which is why I have a lot of mulch. I've also put a whole bunch of compost underneath there as well, just to help them out. But I know I am gonna have to supplement for nutrients over the summer just to kind of give them what they need. But I do have quite a bit of drip irrigation set up there as well, because they are very food hungry and they like moisture. So fingers crossed that I get my big wall of sunflowers and corn at the end of the year. I think that I will. So this big bed behind me here, this is sort of like my main perennial area that's still quite large and empty, but for the most part, I'm just going to leave it as that. You can see my irises have popped up behind me. I've got a lot of lilies, day lilies, things like that that have popped up. They haven't actually flowered yet. I did add a few more things. So I added some Cosmos and Oh, and I added some bergamot and some milkweed. So a few more things that are perennial or will self-seed. I've also put in some calendula. I've harvested from the backyard. I've moved to the front because I want them to self-seed in there. And I'll show you a few of the vegetable things that I have snuck in because it's a super wide open area and I have loads to work with. And as long as I can just plant things strategically where I do already have irrigation hanging out, it usually works out pretty good. So these guys, pumpkin, 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 there's a few over there. Along the back here, these are butternut squash, which actually works out really well because they can just crawl all over the ground. They got loads of space to sort of take over here. And the front part of this is fairly sunny. We're still at kind of the part of the day where the sun's sort of making its way around the house. But they have done quite well here in the past. So I'm pretty excited to get those guys going. I planted more than usual. Got a little, succulent dude hanging out in the corner got some salvia here some blue fescue grass i've got some fasolia which also goes by the name of bluebells and another one hanging out right there super great for pollinators they also self seed which i am hoping that they will do for next year because they're one of the earliest flowers so really nice for the bees more of the irises i love irises not sure if you can tell <laughs> got some pumpkins over here they're looking a little sad little yellow i'm hoping they come around though more grasses funny little shrub things some sort of plant that has black flowers on it that i'll have to show you guys when it flowers so you can help me identify what it is because i have long since lost the tag for it this little section here is yellow irises which i'm pretty excited i don't know if they're actually gonna flower this year they just got transplanted last year but they're stunning lots of yellow with a little bit of purple in them more purple irises whole bunch of lilies so there's some of the just like the regular standard red ones and then I've got some of the black ones here which are these guys they're fabulous when they do flower and they're really taking over this area which I'm pretty excited about lilies are they're not shy they like to take over these rhubarb, this is the first year I'm going to be able to harvest from them and I'm so excited about it. They're actually ready for harvesting right now. Like look at how dark some of those stems are. Just pretty exciting. So that's going to be my next harvesting. There's those cosmos. This little patch right here, these are called crookneck squash or sometimes summer squash. So I've got, I think six of them sitting in through there. There's the milkweed that I just planted this year. I've also got some zinnias and I've also strategically planted, which you probably can't really tell super easily. There's a borage hiding in there. There is some little calendulas that I've sprinkled in around more lilies. So there's a whole bunch of red lilies there. 
My elephant ears are blooming right now, which are quite nice. They don't love a ton of heat, and thankfully the trees have started to fill in a little bit. This little guy right here, which I just planted, is a black calla lily. They are stunning, kind of fan of black flowers. They I have to dig up and bring into the house because they won't overwinter, unfortunately. And this little trellis situation, these are supposed to be cuca melons. <laughs> And it looks like I may have lost two out of the three. This one's doing all right. These guys are not. That one actually looks like there is still a tiny bit of life. <laughs> I started them a little too early in the house and they just, they're one of those plants that don't really love their roots being disturbed. So I think that's what's going on here. Got some lilies and heliopsis, so big tall flowers that kind of look like mini sunflowers I'm pretty excited about. This thing very likely is a weed, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to let it flower and see what happens. Some more elephant ears. And then I decided in this corner here that's fairly shady most of the day, you can see I've got some rows started, that is going to be spinach. Fingers crossed, we'll see how it does. Purely experimental, there might be too much heat. Okay, so I promised to show you our new house guests. Now, we have a giant spruce tree <laughs> right there. That guy that hangs out on the other side of the house, we call it the bird hotel because there's so many nests in it and we've had to like cut it right out from the inside um, because it's planted too close to the house. So it's sort of like our bedroom is almost inside it and we can kind of watch the birds that way. But this year, the robins, they've decided to set up shop in a different place. And I will show you because mama right now, she is sitting on... <laughs> We've, there's five eggs in there, and I think three out of the five have sprouted. She's looking real adorable. So right in the middle, there's Mama. I don't want to get too much closer. We've kind of come to an understanding where she seems to recognize me and know my voice enough that she doesn't get too spooked if I'm within a few feet of the thing. But if I start making too much noise, she gets a little excited and flies out and gives me an earful. But maybe I'll be able to get a video soon of all the little fuzzy guys that are in there every now and then you see a beak poke out. But this is our Robin. We've named her Mama. So these are the last of everything. So I've just got a few stragglers, some flowers, some lavender that are way behind, some petunias that I bought to kind of supplement, some zinnias, marigolds, all of my herbs I'm still pondering. We don't have a lot of herbs that are perennial in zone three, but I'm tempted to stick them in the front in my perennial area and see what happens. We'll see, this might be their year for experimenting. And this is where my cucumbers are going. So I put this mesh all along the outside of the fence here and then I've got them in five gallon pails. I put two per five gallon pail, which I think should be fine as far as sort of watering requirements. And then I've got my drip irrigation, you can kind of see hooked up. Um, I have to kind of finish that, but that's what that's all about. And a whole bunch of empty pots that I thought I was going to fill, but I don't have anything to put in them that I don't, I think at the moment. Well, that is it. That is garden tour number three and yeah, 90% ish. I would say I've got planted. I am humming and hawing of what to do with some of the extra holes that I have. As I said, I was about to put some more carrots and then I thought better of it because I always seem to end up with way too many carrots, even though I do like eating them, freezing them, pickling them, but I still always have too many. So I'm just going to kind of chew on that for a minute. And yeah, I'm surprised. I started a ton of plants in the house, more plants than I've ever started, but my creativity level for finding new places to put things is just like, kind of keeps leveling up each year. And yeah, I opened up enough space for all of the things this year that 
I have big holes, so we'll see, see how it goes. I do have some kale and some bok choy still hiding in the house that I'm going to be bringing out fairly soon here. The flea beetles have finally let up, which is amazing, thank God, because they were just doing all sorts of damage to my bok choy. I probably will harvest three plants out of, I'm sure the original was like 10 plants that I had put out, but whatever. They've left my kale, my broccoli, my kohlrabi, my cabbage, all that stuff seems to be fine. So sometimes it's all right to have sacrificial plants. Well, we will see you again very soon. Thanks for sticking around. I would love to hear if you have any questions. <laughs> Our little Robin dude, I think, has uh, had enough. I'm getting an earful from her now. But we'll see you guys soon. Have an amazing day.